Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we've got a little bit of a different plan in place because unfortunately uh, it's not a great day to work on a convertible uh, and take it for a test drive. And I will show you why in just a few seconds. Um, this is the downsides of living in the state of Michigan and working on cars that are sometimes fun. It's not exactly a great day to be driving them around with no roof on. So we're gonna try some other things today. Uh, we're gonna try to actually play with the OBD2 sensor. I've got one of these uh, Elm 327 OBD ports and some Python code that we're gonna play with. Fire up the laptop and see if we can actually get in there and connect to it. Got the car on now, uh, and it's in accessory position. I've just got the uh, battery off, but uh, the ignition's not on. And we're gonna go down here to our OBD port. It's pretty dark down here with the, the lighting I've got, so. And we're gonna plug this little guy in. It looks like it lights up right away and powers up, so that's good news. And next thing we're gonna do is hop out, back out, and go to my laptop, flip it open. And we're going to see if we can see that wireless interface up in our wireless interface options. And there it is, Wi-Fi OBD2. Connect to that. And it's trying to connect. There it goes. And then let's take a look at what our IP is now, because I think we have, this thing uh, gives out a, whoops, IF config, gives out an IP address. Let's take a look. Where is our EN? Zero. So, no, that's probably not it. That's probably. Okay, I don't know which one it is. All right, so I figured out what my IP address was here, and this is kind of hard to see, but, uh, and I'm holding a camera up to a computer screen. That seems pretty stupid, but uh, what we're going to do now is I was able to ping the, uh, the controller so I can see that it's running and uh, connect to it, and we're going to try to use this uh, library, uh, Python OBD2 library, and I'll, I'll put the link to this down in the description so if anybody else wants to give this a try. This looks like it's been uh, updated pretty recently. So yeah, in the last year or so, the Python OBD Wi-Fi library has been updated. So we're gonna give some of the example code some tries and see if we can actually get some information back out of the car uh, while we're running this code. So let's give it a shot. gotten some work going here uh, let's, let's get in a little closer here and see uh, what we've actually been able to do is run a couple of commands and uh, I'm able to get the voltage out of the OBD scanner I was able to get the status codes which there are none right now uh, so let's see if we can get uh, some other well maybe we should just loop through this whole thing and build a little script that uh, shows us exactly uh, what commands are supported by this sensor on this particular car because what I want to do ultimately is potentially use a Raspberry Pi with this little sensor to drive some gauges on the screen. So if I can get that right out of the ECU, rather than having to put in my own manual gauges, that's what I'd like to do. Good news, the OBD Wi-Fi, the Elm 327 Wi-Fi adapter actually has really good range. So I can sit here and work on writing code to try to get into it while I leave the car out in the garage and I can hang out with the puppies while I'm doing that. They seem to be really intrigued by this. So we're gonna hack away at some code and see if we can get a little bit of a virtual dashboard going from the car. As I was talking about earlier, I used this uh, GitHub repo, the Python OBD Wi-Fi, to actually do some of the Python code. Um, and again, I'll leave a link down in the description to this, but you can see it here. So I wrote a couple of different scripts here. Uh, 
first script was actually this little generate script, and I used this script to generate some code so that I could get all of the sensors that were supported by the system. Uh, so if we take a look back into our uh, this particular project here, and we look at the actual docs for that project, we can see that inside the basic usage here, all the various different commands and things along those lines, uh, but the actual commands themselves are uh, right here, this command table. So here's all the various different commands that the library supports using that Elm uh, 327 adapter. And so what I did is I took all of these, I copied them into a uh, numbers sheet or Google Doc, whatever you want to do it. I deleted all the columns that needed to be deleted, and then I copied those into a text file, and then I wrote a script to, uh, well, actually I didn't even write a script, I just used VS Code to take all those lines and rewrap them into one big Python array, which is all of those, and then I used this to actually uh, write code uh, into a file. So you can see it actually just printed all this out. I ran that from the command line, which basically wrote me a new script uh, automatically that would then go through the entire output of all of the different support uh, sensors and print them to uh, the command line. So what I actually got when I did that is a, uh, let's see, all the different sensors. So I could see the sensor itself and then the output of that sensor, every single one on a new line. And then I just went through here and figured out all of the ones that were actually uh, responding. So you can see um, all of these ones, I deleted all the ones that weren't working, uh, but anything from that giant list that wasn't working, I just removed it from the list and then I added it to this unsupported sensors list. So here's all the sensors that my sky doesn't support and then all the sensors it does support. Uh, well, here's the, well, actually I lied. These are the supported sensors by the uh, Elm unit and you can see what comes back when it, uh, it says not supported by the car itself. And so taking all that into account, I then had a list of all the different sensors I wanted and I just decided that I actually wanted just a few of those sensors out, but Here's the uh, the output script that I did to get all that. And then from there, I went and wrote this little dash script. Uh, and the dash script actually just went through, used the connection. So I connected to our Elm device over Wi-Fi. And then I just said, while through, get the coolant, get the boost, and get the voltage, because those are the three uh, ones that I wanted on my little dashboard from the supported ones. And then I uh, rounded those or changed those and converted those appropriately, because it did this in kilopascals, and it did this one in Celsius, and this was volts, so that was fine, but I wanted this in Fahrenheit, I wanted this in PSI. So I did the math on that, and then I wrote this little loop that connects to it, and then uh, shows it on screen, and that's what you see running uh, when I did the first setup. Well, we've succeeded. Uh, I've got a little bit of a code running right now. I've built a really ghetto little dashboard that grabs a couple of sensors in real time. So you can see here, I've got uh, my coolant temp, my boost gauge and voltage all coming back from the ECU right now via the wireless to my terminal. And uh, we're gonna try firing up the car and see what happens to those gauges as we fire it up. So after I actually did the uh, initial tests and validated everything, I decided I wanted to actually build a little bit of a user interface for the device um, that I could run potentially on a Raspberry Pi in the future and put its own little screen in it. So I built uh, an app that actually uses a GUI. I can fire up X Windows, and I did this uh, using Python's, uh, uh, actually it's using the GUI Zero, the Raspberry Pi uh, very simple UI library. And then every one second, I just get updates to all of those different things. So I wrote little definitions for getting the temperature, getting the boost, getting the voltage out of it. And then I built my little uh, UI here. And then that look rolls up and what it looks like is this.
Hey guys, thanks again for watching. Uh, another cold day here in Michigan. Hopefully it'll warm up a little bit in the coming days and we can actually get this thing out on the road. Thanks for watching. See you next time.